Welcome everyone, it's Truthman from Overclocking TV and Masman from HWBot. We are here at uh, Taipei Taiwan. So Masman, how is it going? Well, what, why are we here? What's, what's going on here now? Well, today we're here for the MS, MSI MOA uh, 2013 Grand Finals, uh, the, the classic battles, which is day one of this, uh, of this event. And um, in the classic, classic battles, everyone gets the gear from MSI and its sponsors and have to uh, get a, the best scores possible in Superbike 32M, Cinebench and 3D Mark Fire Strike. That's just for the first day because this competition is today. Yep. So what's going to be happening tomorrow? Tomorrow there is a freestyle event where uh, competitors can use any hardware they want, uh, MSI motherboards and MSI graphic cards, uh, of course, to break as much uh, world records as possible. So for each world record they break, they get a, a 1,000 USD at the end of the competition. And uh, it's very interesting, actually, because Corsair also provides 10,000 USD, which is 1,000 USD for every uh, of the 10 benchmarks. Um, and if you use Corsair memory, you can actually win up to 2,000 USD. Every time you break a world record mode, you can you can win up to two hundred USD, uh, two thousand USD. Every time you break something, it's, yeah, we, we it's have the to... maximum you can get from one benchmark, actually. Yeah, we have to specify though the the world record is at the end of the competition, so it doesn't matter how many times you improve your world record, it would only would uh, count as one. Yeah, that's the the last one at the uh, at the ceremony time. That's gonna make uh, the the real one. Okay, so let's back on uh, on today, day one, classic battle. So, uh, as you said, there's uh, three benchmark. Uh, how is it going for the teams? Like, with the 16 teams here, uh, who's here, and how does the qualification went for that? Um, so, the qualification went uh, online. Uh, okay, I need to fix my audio, apparently. The qualifications were online on HWBot, and uh, uh, it was divided up into three regions and two different classes. So, you had a class A, which was with the high-end hardware, and uh, two, two rounds, you could qualify in the first round and then all the participants of the top 15 would move on to the second round and have a, another chance on qualifying for this event. And then there was also a, um, a B class, which was with very mainstream hardware, a lower expense cost, um, but they had to go through the two rounds before they could actually win two of the tickets for this, uh, for this grand final event. Um, in, in the end, we came with uh, uh, 15 qualified, uh, qualified uh, overclockers and one of the uh, champions from last year, which was a Korean overclocker OC Windforce. Sure, so all the overclockers went on uh, the to get qualified. Um, do you think it's a good achievement for Shibu to have like such a good uh, and big competition to have the, uh, that on, online for the complete qualification process and only the final is live? I think everyone would like to see a lot more live events, but um, when you when you look at the financial structure of having uh, live regional finals, it, it becomes very very expensive. So, I guess I guess doing it on HWBot and doing it open for everyone is the best alternative to uh, very expensive regional live finals. Yeah, sure. It may it kind of makes sense for now that everyone is trying to get on the budget for the for the right thing. But here we are in in Taiwan, Taipei. Um, Sixteen overclockers get invited here. They been flew here, so that's that's still quite a lot. Uh, that's still quite impressive for from a side to put that kind of competition out. Yeah, and it, yeah, and it's different from from last year. So uh, all the previous editions actually, um, MOA had uh, teams of two people, and this year the overclockers are participating by themselves, which is um, already creating a very very interesting atmosphere because everyone's very tied to their own uh, table and no one is really talking to to each other. They're very focused on on their own stuff. Um, whereas previous editions, you would have teammates talking to each other, and it would be a little bit more no noise. Um, I'm not sure how it will pan out, but maybe this this increased um, this increased uh, focus on the overclocking results. Maybe the results are better than other years, or worse. Maybe you need a teammate to focus completely on the on the on the task at hand. Uh, actually, that's that's quite funny because there's some, some some people that actually are used to be in team and they're competing each on their own. Like let's say Ukraine. Like two weeks ago, they were another uh, competition and they were competing together. And here now they're competing against each other, basically. So that that's quite interesting to see how these guys gonna gonna go and do uh, on this kind of like by themselves competitions. I, I see that the the, the, the countries that have uh, two participants, which is uh, Australia with Sniper Oz and JJJC, and then uh, Brazil with Arbuaz and Gnidaol, and then Ukraine with Tolsti and Cyclone, they're also sitting next to each other. So. 
maybe it would have been more interesting to split them out actually because they have uh, some maybe even even if it's just moral support from their compatriots but <laughs> you, you can get the Galatians some information uh, during the, the especially for the freestyle day that's going to be tomorrow so if, uh, I can guess that tomorrow most of the people are going to help each other because even if there's, ca if there's cash price involved I think if you don't get uh, if your card can't do like a 1900 megahertz uh, on the GPU, you're, you're kind of have to get something out for that. So I think that most of the guys will help each other, like, okay, you can do that, or you could try that. And especially if the guys used to work in teams, if they, they side by side, maybe that's going to help them. But for today, there's no, there's no real impact for that. Uh, no, and actually you're correct, because if you look at, um, if you look at, for instance, Tulsi and Cyclone, Last year they competed as a team and they had a total amount of two graphic cards for that team. But now if they combine their resources, they actually have four graphic cards. That's going to be interesting to see if people just, either all the other words, just pick the right one to bench as much as they can. We were going to see tomorrow if, if that's still okay on the rules. Yeah, yeah, obviously that only applies to the freestyle, right? They, they're not going to share their cards for this competition because it's, it's a one versus one. It's man against man. <laughs> oh, yeah, please win for me. It's like, what? <laughs> okay, so it's like 10.37 uh, here in Taiwan, 10.37 a.m. Uh, in less than five minutes, all the overclickers are going to be able to submit their first score. Um, can you talk a bit more about the first benchmark? So the first benchmark is a SuperPi 32M. Uh, it has a weight of uh, 40% and a baseline score. Uh, and a baseline score of uh, I need to check uh, the rules. The baseline score is uh, seven minutes, uh, three seconds, and 441 milliseconds. So the way to score points is uh, you set a certain score, and then it, they look at the percentual gain over this base baseline score. And the, the higher the percentual gain, the higher you get into the, the higher um, points you get. Basically, it's a percentage score. Um, and yeah, the the first stage is going to start in about three minutes. Um, and I'm not sure what kind of a result we we're going to be expecting or we we can expect from from the CPUs here. It's very unclear what the CPUs are going to be able to do. So. Maybe there's a couple of lucky guys, maybe some of them are, are less fortunate, we'll see. Yeah, actually there's like two, two uh, I mean uh, the SuperPy 32 m is going to be like one big uh, one big step for the CPU like ranking, then after they're going to have sign invention and uh, 3D Mark Fire Strike. Um, w one thing is, let's get back to what the, what the we, we talked about the CPU, but what is the hardware that the guys are using today. So basically the, the MSI mainboard, the, uh, the M Power Max, uh, it's based on the Z87 chipset. Um, let's introduce the graphic card. Uh, the, the graphics card is the 780 Lightning, um, and there's actually two variants of the cards that the um, that the competitors have. They have one variant with Alpida memory, and then they have one variant that they, they received today with Samsung memory. And what we see now is very interesting, is that every single overclocker is, the first thing they do is they pre-test the Samsung memory on the new graphic card. Because it can go to maybe 1950 or even 2000 megahertz instead, instead of the, the 1700 or 1750 that the Alpida memory can do. So I think if you want to win this competition, you're going to have to have a very good uh, card with Samsung memory. But actually, that's that's what they they made the 780 Lightning with LPDA memory first, and then overclockers asked to get Samsung chip on it, so they changed it to get the new chip on the on it, and they gave it to do to them today. So like pretty much no one tested that before. That's the first time they're gonna test with this kind of memory on it. Yeah, there's there's other cards out there that have the Samsung memory as well. So everyone knows the benefit of the Samsung uh, memory, but no one has ever tested it on a 780 Lightning. Should be better that way. So the the microphone was too close. I'm sorry. Yeah, but you can hear me in it. So you just have you don't have to you don't have to like cry or me be so loud. But it's fine. <laughs> okay, so continue on the hardware like the CPU is uh, Intel 4778. So that's a a, a case uh, The memory is provided by Corsair. Do you have something to say about the memory because it's it's kind of like a special one. Well, it's specially bin. It's a it's a MFR memory, Hynix MFR, uh, but very special bin. So it should be a very nice kit. <laughs> and actually, you, you cannot buy this kind of memory uh, on the retail channel. It's like specifically made for this kind of event, right? Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, the SSD, it's it's the first time we see Black Star sponsoring like uh, overclocking competition. So we're gonna see what's uh, what's going uh, what's going on with uh, this kind of SSD during the competition. Uh, Cooler Master is sponsoring the the PSU for the for the power. It's the 1500 watts Silent Pro M2. So the for the past uh, few months we have seen uh, Cooler Master sponsoring a lot of the overclocking event and the overclockers like providing PSUs as much as the overclockers want. So that that's quite good. And and the keyboard and mouse is gonna be provided by Corsair also. Do you have anything to say about the, uh, the, the hardware itself? Like, does it look like a good mix of hardware for you, or that's something different from those competition we used to have before? I think um, it, for for MOA, obviously the MSI hardware is pretty similar to last year. But um, in contrary to previous editions, I think this time around the competitors are are, are uh, competing with actual overclocking memory. In the past, we see that we've seen that a lot of uh, a lot of the kits were mainstream memory and could not overclock very very high. And now we've received uh, now we, we get these 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 kits that are made for overclocking at an overclocking event. So I think the memory is, is definitely um, a step up from the previous editions. In terms of SSD and, and power supply, I'm not sure if there is so much uh, difference with, um, with with last year. It, it doesn't really make that much of a difference. Maybe the PSU would have made a difference in uh, in bit with the GDX uh, 580, but the 780 is not as demanding as the as the 580. So. But I mean, 1500 watts is going to be more than enough, and it's a high quality power supply, obviously. Okay, so, guys, um, you're now okay, so the, the, the so room's going to start, uh, so we're going to let uh, Roman speak for us and uh, go back later. Thanks, Passman, for your time.